now that uh, Drake is gone, G Bone, we should have you do the intros. Oh, should we should we cut and start again? No, we'll, we'll do it next. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh shit! Is that Grant? It's Gary's music. Oh, where's the the glass shattering? Yeah, the glass shatter. We could have you come in like stone. Boom, 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 boom. And we can get a wide shot on your um on your video camera and have you walk into the room like all chest puffed in like a leather uh a leather tank top or whatever Stone Cold would wear. Oh, like, oh god, that's that's Grant's music. That's G Bone's music. That's is that is that the best uh entrance in in wrestling? Or Stone it, Cold? It, or is it just the best entrance period in Ooh. this in sport? In all of sport, I don't know if it's a, the best entrance in all of sport. WWE has come up with some, well, in WWF at the time, has come up with some pretty damn good entrances. I'm not a huge uh, wrestling guy, so I probably just don't know the other, like, oh, actually, like, Rey Mysterio's entrance is way better. You, you've just never seen it before. Well, before. Bray Wyatt, RIP, and the, uh, I forget what they called him in the, and his two little minions that like ran around with him for a while, but his entrance was one of my favorites. He, he, they really? would shut they would shut every light off in the building, and he had a lantern. Oh, and it was just his like face in the lantern light, and everybody would put on the light on their phone in the stadium, and he they called them the fl- the fireflies, and it was like he was out walking in the middle of like a like an eerie pasture a field yeah oh fuck that, i do love they do such a good job developing those characters like, oh. they're, they're all awesome and the music <laughs> was so good yeah this is where we need drake actually because he act, he knows the he knows the professional wrestling bobby rude glorious i will be there i will be there till i'm victorious yeah there's some good ones over there man What's uh, but we don't have any like that over here at the Watch the Block Ons. Welcome into episode 470. It's the Rutgers Butgers. Re- uh, well, preview, not recap. Drake would have some cool intro. Obviously, we have some people that are sad. We got. I had somebody write in and say, "Hey, could you go back and clip Drake talking shit about Rutgers and just throw that into the the recording for Thursday to make it feel like Drake isn't gone for all the people who miss him." And I was like, yeah, we could do that. I'm not going to, but we could. Drake's uh, Drake's basically just an OnlyFans um, girl at this point. You can only get him if you pay for him. So that's the way it is. Kev, how are we doing tonight? Good, boys. How are we? Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I'm just happy to be here. How are we School what, what hat are you wearing there? This is the Rhodes College Lynx. My I used to go to school there. Just repping, repping the old a brand. Statue of, of G Bone at Rhodes College. It's definitely not, but I'm my uh my short time there was not not memorable. But someone breaking into your house, Kev? Uh oh. The yeah, I fucking hope so. I was gonna sick the fuck out of him. Your short time there was what, like one or two years? Uh, it was one online semester and then one uh, I forget in-person that, semester. Yeah, I forget that you're a COVID kid. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, a large part of my college experience has involved the, the C word. That is tough. I, I mean, it wasn't t- ideal. You don't even, you don't, I mean, you didn't even get close. Well, here's, here's what was funny too was I did my entire semester, right? Yeah. I go there first day, you get tested, and then you move in. Yeah. And that whole time they were like, don't go out of your dorm after you get you get moved in because like we need the results to come back and we can't like have it you spread everywhere. Right. And I went and hung out with like the fraternity guys and the lacrosse team and everyone that night. And there was only one positive test from the uh, from the lacrosse team. And it was me. But no. I, was with, I was with like it was like a super spreader event. I was with like. 200 people and you gave it to everybody <laughs> i get every single one i shut oh. down like i shut down like a quarter of the school <laughs> <laughs> All so the then gym. like i i got there though from being like sent away for a semester right because of covid yeah to then it, 24 hours immediately getting sent back <laughs> sent away again 
That's so <laughs> ass. That is so ass. Um, here we are. Here we are. Seven and two is the Hawkeyes record. We enter this week as the, uh, well, it's in our hands. The Big Ten West is in our hands after a bit of a meltdown from the other three competitors. Uh, I don't think they called each other and collectively decided to do that, but the results are what they are. Um, Minnesota loses at home to like a one in five Illinois team in conference. Um, Nebraska loses. They were at Michigan State. They lose to a one in five or like an zero oh in six Michigan State in conference play. And uh, Wisconsin loses to Indiana. Indiana, who was not good in conference play. So three losses on the competitive side. Iowa squeaks by in Wrigley Field. We, you know, we have our destiny in our hands now. There was a fun little graphic posted in the Discord of all the, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but every scenario of the six teams, excluding Purdue, because they are officially out. Uh, every scenario for every Big Ten West team on how they could potentially make Indianapolis. And it was, it was pretty interesting. It looked, Kevin, it looked like the bulletin board of Charlie with all of the, you know, the strings attaching everything. You're on mute right now, but. Um, it's a good flow chart. Yeah, the flow chart. Um, There's also, I believe the seven-way tie is still on the table. For the big no, it, I don't think. I don't think it is because Purdue. I thought I, it was. Well, we they, can, like Purdue can't win it, but they can. People can I, stoop down to Purdue's level. Oh, we, Kevin, we can't hear you. I don't know what it is that's happening. Um, oh, yeah, I muted myself because the dog was barking. There you go. Um, Purdue is one and five, which means the best they can go is four and five. Mm-hmm. And you tell me that somehow that ends up in a tie with somebody. Maybe I don't think it. I don't think it could. You know, with, with Iowa at seven and. Two, I don't think it could be. Or I guess, what are we in it's conference? I was going to say, I believe the in-conference record is all that So matters. we're four and two in four, conference, four so I guess two. maybe it could still happen. I don't think anybody wants that to happen. Well, I can tell you what, that flow chart gets um, really narrow if Iowa wins the next two games. Basically, if sure Iowa does. wins the next two games, they basically are going to have it locked because – because Minnesota is going to lose to Ohio State. So you win, you win the next two games, right? You're six and two, um, and you automatically have a tiebreaker over Wisconsin, who already has three losses, so they would be out. Um, you would assume that Minnesota is losing to Ohio State, which would give them a fourth loss, so they would be out. And Nebraska, unlikely to win the next two games. Maybe they'll win one of them. Maybe, maybe they'll lose both of them, but. I'd say that there's a small chance that they beat both Maryland and Wisconsin. So if they drop one of those two, Iowa wins the next two. Yeah. Iowa's going to the Big Ten championship. See, and, and people say the Big Ten West isn't entertaining. Look at all these scenarios. Look I, at all the I, possible I, chaos. I have to agree. I, I'll say this. Top to bottom, most competitive <laughs> maybe the league's ever been. Anyone can beat anyone. And I don't think there's been a line between oh, two yeah. West teams that exceeds – Maybe nine points. It's a it's a deep conference. The Hawks were over ten to Wisconsin, weren't they? I think it was ten and a half, nine and a half, depending on where you were. Yeah. Oh, the Hawks? Yeah. 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 We were t- except of course you only use the, the Bedford app, I'm assuming. Shit. I guess that's gotta be the biggest line then. I feel like it's 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 closer. I feel like it should be close. Speaking of lines. We'll get into our our Betfred sponsored betting app bet, betting segment later. Um, Wisconsin is nine and a half point favorites over Northwestern this week. No, uh, Rutgers and Iowa just continuing to pave new ground. Twenty eight and a half. I saw on some on some apps. Is this the third record we've set this year? I think it's so. The third record we've set in three weeks. <laughs> by by my math. I believe it's been bet up to like 29, maybe 29 and a half at this point. It has gone up, I believe, yes. Which which makes me sad. 
I need to see a line in the teens. Jose, if Vegas had any any balls, they would set this at 15. I agree. And just dare you to take the over. Dare you. I mean, you can't in good conscience take a line under on 15. There's, Or, or can you? You can throw good conscience to the side, though, Kevin. You could still do it. If it, if it's it's, it's got to be less. It's got to be substantially less than one percent of all football games ever played have gone under fifteen. Well, what what percent of football games have the Iowa Hawkeyes played in? <laughs> less than one percent. Yeah, one percent. Math checks out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would have to if it, if they set one at fifteen I would have to take the under. You'd just, have to you'd have to do it just for fun. Be, yeah, it would be unlike anything I've ever experienced. Because you like, let's say they go score so go down first drive touchdown. It's it's almost over already. Yeah, but and then you also it. know that it's Iowa versus another Big Ten West team. It's like right. they could just never score again. They're gonna shut it down right there. <laughs> they could shut it down right now. I think what would have to happen for that is. It has to be a torrential downpour or like a, snowstorm. Yeah, snowstorm. And even then, I feel like if you get so far down the path of weather, I almost feel like there's a U curve to that because at some point you start kicking off and you kick it down to the five yard line. I mean, you could easily just fumble, or or if they get downed right there, they don't, they can't grab traction. All of a sudden, they're deep in their territory. That's going to turn into some. You're going to be getting possessions inside your own ten yard line, and the defense is going to have some serious opportunity in that game. So, I feel like there would be there may be an inverse uh, uh, correlation at some point. Um, sad news: just before I got on the podcast, I saw that the NCAA. Uh, finally figured out what they wanted to come out with for the I'm not even sure we'd call it the the readjustment of yeah the readjustment of policy regarding players and sports betting and it was very very brief and skimmed just through Twitter headlines but what I gather is that if you bet on your own team if you bet on games, but it wasn't your own team, that punishment still holds a year of ineligibility. If it's your own school, but not your own team. So, so like, like Iowa football player is betting basketball, Iowa basketball or vice versa. I think the wrestlers got pinged for betting Iowa football. So That's such bullshit, dude. I mean, I get it a little bit that – betting on your own school could start to get dicey if you're like, it's, but it's so dumb to think that you could like uh, one sport could like somehow convince another sport to throw a game. I, I guess that's where the punishment comes in is, or the, the distinct punishment of that comes in is like, well, you know, the players that you're betting on. So you could have some, I, I don't know what their reasoning is, but uh, this is injustice for Noah Shannon and the wrestling team. And it makes me sad. I don't like this. It's very disappointing. I feel like we got kind of led on too. Like we had a glimmer of hope. Yeah. Like a month and a half ago. Yeah. They went back. They came out with these like proposed adjustments. And then they, you know, the ones that come out today are different. They're, they're actually mo still more, Strict, I guess. I, I don't know. Now, granted, part of that's probably on us for like, uh, like there was sure. no hope, and then we got our hopes up, and then now there's no hope again. But I definitely, I feel bad for Noah for sure. Yeah, I mean, and the punishment's probably a little bit of excessive, but at the same time, we talked about it earlier in the season when this all came out. Like, there was a very clear line that players were told not to cross, and they crossed it. So, you know. I, I can only have so much sympathy for it. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> I think people are going to look back and say, wow, we really ended people's careers because they wanted to place a $10 bet on their buddy who played basketball and they, they wanted to bet on them winning a game. 
Like, I just, I don't know. I get silly, it. Yes, but it's also silly to risk your eligibility for that ten dollar bet. You're right. You're right. Like they they knew going in that that was a possibility, right? Like that was ironclad. Do not bet on sports. Now, yeah, a whole year probably excessive, but it is what it is. Yeah, I get that there's rules, but I also know that people make those rules and people can go back and and look at things. So I I don't know. It seems it seems more of like uh, I don't know. The NCAA fucking sucks. That's all I know. Uh, no argument here. What else do we got on this podcast? Uh, <laughs> let's talk about. Uh, let's talk quickly, because I get to see the two of you. Yes. Uh, in fact, forty-eight hours from right now, we will all be hanging out in back pocket in Coralville. We'll be kissing babies, shaking hands. Drinking hops by a million, signing, taking pictures. If you guys want that, some people will want it. I don't need. At this point, it feels like a lot of the uh, people that we've already met and take, taken pictures with. It's like, don't feel like you have to come up and like ask for a picture. Like we, <laughs> we're just got guys. The we're just guys who you listen to, and I get it if you've like this is the first time you're ever going to see us, and like you've been listening for a long time, but like feel no obligation to actually come up and make us like bigger than we are 6 p.m friday night the 10th you're hearing this probably about 36 hours or less Mm -hmm. away from that moment and if you'd like to come by drink some hops by a million beer collaboration between us and back pocket help pregame the pregame for the rutgers game on saturday have a good time meet some cool people and honestly really the big pull of this thing is we got drake to get his ass in a metal tube and fly back to the state of iowa pulled him from the desert and he will be the main attraction please show up I think so. Please, you know, he like he wasn't there when we did the first event at Back Pocket. He hasn't been, uh, he hasn't been anywhere except you know it's been two years basically since he, twenty twenty one when we showed up the, the Big Ten Championship. I think people want to see Drake. Please come and try to double leg takedown, or whatever you prefer, as a. Uh, as a, an engagement physically with Drake. And uh, I think everybody would like to see the show that happens after that. Uh, no, but Drake's going to be there. All four of us are going to be there. It'll be the first time that the walk-ons do an event since Gary has joined where all four of us are there. A public, a public, oh, okay. public event. We were at tight in you. That was kind of a private deal. I'm uh, very excited for this though. And I, I, you got to mention too, portions of the proceeds from every single can go to charity. Every can. That's why we're doing it. Really, we're gonna meet and greet from six until seven thirty ish, or until people stop lining up and like we're just standing there and we're like, okay, nobody wants pictures or autographs anymore. <laughs> and then uh, we'll put the merch away, and we will. Just hang out. We'll just be guys at the bar hanging out. Pack the place. Come on down if you're in town for the game and uh, and have fun with us at Back Pocket. Uh, we'll probably hang out. I don't. After that, we'll hang out. There's no end cap on this. I don't know when Back Pocket closes. Probably like 11. probably t- probably ten. Ten, you think? Uh, I don't know if I'll stay till the end. You can't leave early from your own event. I'm not closing down back pocket. Oh, I thought you were saying like, oh, you know, maybe 7.30. I dip No, 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 no. I'll stay until at least like 9. Okay. Have they told you how many six packs of Hops by a Million Tall Boys they're going to have on hand this particular day? All of them. 
All of them that they made will be in the Corvo back pocket. Correct. I think the plan is... Is this, it feasible to drink them all? It's 2,400 tall boys. It's a lot of fucking beer. Is that a challenge? It can be, but, uh, I mean, you got to imagine, even if we brought in 300 people, I mean, that's, boys a person. that's eight tall boys a person. And there's no shot that everyone's drinking eight tall boys. Oh, you know, maybe. You got to count for some spillage. I don't think. So, I, so we haven't really talked about this with Back Pocket, but the. This is sort of this. This release night is sort of a. Like a, an interest gauge on this collaboration and how much uh, product we're able to move. I made it sound like Breaking Bad there. Um, you know, if we if we come in and we get a bunch of people to show up to this thing and because and, I don't here's the deal. I don't know how much how much uh, interest or I, I would like to think that the Hawks by a million and people seeing hops by a million and, and, and our logo outside of this event would you know would encourage them to buy the beer and it would be popular i don't think it's going to carry i mean it's, it's obviously not going to carry even a fraction of the interest that like the swarm beer has gotten and all the promotion they've done for that so i th i think that this event is a gauge we'll see how popular it is after friday night or after this weekend they'll kind of tally up you know what we were able to move friday night and I think after that, they may split the remaining inventory between their three locations. They have one in Dubuque and one in Johnston. And then depending on how quickly that sells out from those locations, including the Corville location, then I think we're looking to do another run, hopefully a bigger run, more product, early 2024. But those, you know, I don't know... I, I honestly have no idea. I couldn't tell you how popular this is going to be. It might flop, and they're going to be like, hey, it was fun doing a beer with you. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Or who knows? Maybe we drink twelve or 1,500 cans on Friday night, and they're like, holy smokes, we blew through over half our inventory. You know, We're going to sell out the, the other 1,000 cans, and then... Uh, I'm thinking option A. Or not, no, option B. Option the, B. The 12, 12. I would love that. Not the non-flop. I believe in the brand. I believe in the walk-on army. Uh, I think I think if we all put our minds together, we set a goal, we can achieve it. I, I enjoy and admire your optimism, Grant, and I'm not going to say it can't happen. Your, your, your tone was not, not very... Well, I've never been good with tone, Grant, it have was, I? It was not there. Never been great with tone. I'm sorry. Jennings Dunker eats 10,000 calories on game day. Insane. Well, the more, the more insane number is the amount during games. Supposedly 3,000 ish from the time he walks in the locker room after the Hawk walk till the time he walks out. That is about a six hour window sometimes five to six hour window um so i wouldn't call that crazy it's definitely a lot compared to a normal person most people don't eat three thousand calories in a six hour window while also playing a division one football game right you have to remember though that a lot of the those calories are coming through sports drink which is easy like the, that's some of the most easy calories you can get how many Gatorades is 3,000 calories? I mean, 30? I think Gatorade's almost a couple hundred, right? Yeah, I think a Gatorade might be like 180 calories for a 16 ounce, like a 12 or 16 ounce Gatorade. Um, 80 there, calories for 12 ounces. Okay. He's also eating, he's also eating food. I mean, it's a six hour window. Like, there's, there's like food in the locker room, like fruit and, oh. Uh, energy bars and like, uh, new like Gatorade nutrition products. You can easily get three thousand calories. The energy chews, which are basically just like 
gummy bears except in square oh, form. And you can eat those are awesome. You, you can eat about 50 of those before you start to feel anything and you're like and you're probably 1000 calories deep at that point. I uh, I was picturing he was going like half time and there's like a chicken alfredo waiting for him. <laughs> he brings, that's like that's like 2500 of them, right? Can there. you imagine Kev if he brought he got a little box Friday night at snack and just packed a cheeseburger, like a double cheeseburger for halftime. <laughs> that would be incredible. Um, I, was, uh, I was usually a piece of fruit and like a bar before the game and then a piece of fruit at halftime. Was I was a Gatorade for the a, uh, a boost because my cat, believe it or not, as little as I did, the amount of um, – especially when it was warm, uh, September, or October, um, the amount of like just sweat you go through being in pads and a uniform and going through a warm up and, um, your heart rate is high for five hours because you're juiced and it's game day and you're just burning a, a lot of calories. So oh, I yeah. Go th- yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like you will burn a lot of energy and calories just being in that environment on the sideline. People in the stands are burning more calories than they normally are because the because it's such a juiced environment that your heart is pumping at thirty percent more than it normally. Especially does. if your brain is like super engaged, it, yeah, like your brain burns a shit ton of calories. Actually. I I actually heard about well, that's you, you ever see the that? thing about like uh, how many calories like guys playing chess and like grandmasters tournaments like burn? Yeah. It's like a crazy amount, and they're Some, just sitting in a chair. I I, I don't remember the actual number, but it's it's insane. So I I literally heard this on a podcast today uh, between two very smart people. Both have PhDs. I believe one was a one's in psychology. The other one is an actual medical doctor that I I listened to. And um, I I heard the stat. It was like your brain weighs two percent of your body weight, but burns twenty five percent of your calories. Like that's wild. Research suggests that a chess player could burn up to 132 calories per hour. Jesus Christ. So is this saying that when I'm sitting on my couch watching football, if I'm like really thinking about it and stressing, I'm yeah. actually doing good for my health? I don't think so. Maybe if you were like the offensive coordinator and you were coaching playing. from the couch. No, no. If you were. Not watching from the couch now. Um, yeah, so the you know, then you add on top of it that Jennings Dunker is a three hundred and twenty pound plus individual, and a man like that, an athlete, no less, who's got a lot, lot of muscle mass on his body. He's going through a lot of physical exertion. He's losing a lot during sweat uh, or during the game in sweat. Kev, what do you think those linemen lose in a game in a hot game? Pound wise, they probably lose upwards of fifteen pounds. The uh, like the first few games of the year, uh, fifteen is probably a little bit of a stretch, but I'd ten. say seven to ten. Yeah, I know for a fact that some of those linemen would come in from camp practices and they'd be down eight to ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and obviously that's not real weight; that's water weight, right? They're they're losing most of that in sweat, but to replace that. It takes a lot. Um, so, uh, I, so I, I was going to ask, I was comparing this to, did you, do you guys remember that LeBron story where he said that he gained seven pounds during a game one time? I think I just saw this article the other day or something about that. Like, I don't know. Is that, how is you, that like the same thing? Like, do you think there's any chance like Jennings Dunker is like gaining during games? No, no, no shot. I also, I also don't know. Like, I personally don't really believe the LeBron story, but I you have like, to oh, drink. You know, if Jennings Dunker's doing it too, then if you if you're a football guy, especially one like Jennings Dunker who's playing, and you end up heavier than you were after the practice or game, you drank an absolute insane amount of liquid, wild amount. I suppose it could happen. I mean, it's possible, but unlikely. Yeah. Um, 10,000 calories a day, Kev. I don't know what the most calories you've ever eaten in a day is. I think I'm more than that. You think you've had more than 10,000 calories in a day? I've, I've indulged myself a few days in my life. Yeah. Wow. Dude, if you eat energy packed food, like if you eat really fatty food, it's actually not that hard. 
you don't have to tell me about energy dense food. I I know 10,000 is still hard. Dude, just if you eat ice cream, that's a lot of fucking ice cream to get to 10,000 calories. It's like one of those YouTube and ice cream is about as dense as it gets. Yeah, but it's 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 mostly carbs and sugar calories. It's not it's not as much fat calories. I don't know. There's like just go eat 10 avocados, man. And avocados that's, like, like, that's like halfway there. No, an avocado is like 200 calories. Depends on the size of the avocado. Avocados from Mexico. Not a sponsor. Should be. Think we could get an avocado sponsor? That would be great because I eat a shit ton of avocados. Medium avocados, 240 calories. So if you get a large avocado and you eat 10 of them, which you're going to be yeah. so full. That's that's 3,000 right there. You're a th You're not even a third of the way there. I don't know, man. If I was going to eat 10,000 calories, I'd be eating a lot of ice cream. I know that. You'd probably be drinking a lot of ice cream. I'd be eating Krispy Kreme donuts. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers cheese are very calorie dense. Cheeseburgers as well. I go pizza. I go nice, pizza. nice meat lovers. Dense. Um, Put some ranch on there. The condiments will really help drive oh, that. Yeah. up. Get yourself a couple packets of Chick-fil-A sauce. I mean, like one packet of Chick-fil-A sauce is like 160 calories. There you go. You drink a fucking coffee from Starbucks that's like 800 calories. Yeah, I was just going to say. if, if yeah, you really, Especially if you're drinking calories. Yeah, it's actually really not that hard. Drink, that. Drinking's the easiest way to do it. If you really just want to get to 10,000 calories as fast as you can, chug as, ch chug as much olive oil as you can before you throw up. And you'll, you'll, just get, <laughs> you'll be there. You'll get there. Heavy cream would be good. I think eight. I think eight ounces of heavy cream is like a thousand calories. What if you just ate like a stick of butter? Butter would be good. Yeah. It's funny you bring that up. We used to do um, bets back when we were kids, but not betting on money. But you know, say playing a bank, uh, game of bags, game of ping pong, whatever you call it. But the loser had to do punishments like that, like eat half a stick of butter. Eat a box of macaroni and cheese raw. Oh, with the powder? With the powder. Oh, <laughs> it would take the, so long. The worst one I ever had to do is a cup of oatmeal raw. Brutal. Ooh. Brutal. Oh. Well, that's like a, that's Charlie McDennis. Oh. You got to eat all the, the, the cake. The, all yeah. the, the ingredients of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Individually. <laughs> you know, Sonny. I only, I think I ate. I told you this before. I only know Charlie McDennis. Uh, yeah, you did say that. I want you to know Sonny so that all three of us can make. If there is a, a Washed Up Walk-Ons uh, Hulu subscription I could use with the company money, I will gladly watch the show, but it is currently unavailable to me. Okay. We might have to look into that. I feel like that's worth it. Um, Grant, you want to pull up your top 25? Oh, sure. Oh, my gosh. You know, the Hawks make an appearance this week, Kev. I don't know if you follow with the, the, the G-Bone top 25 each week. Uh, I, I do see it when it comes across my Twitter feed, yeah. And he was he was ahead of the game. The AP did not put him in the top 25. But G-Bone did, and then the college football playoff put him in there too. Yeah, the playoff likes to uh, – they kind of like to get ahead of themselves because they want the championship games to be as – like they don't want – an unranked team really in any of the power five championship mm -hmm. games. Yeah. So I think they're kind of like trying to get ahead of themselves a little bit with that. Uh, and I'll, uh, But I still, I think that at, at seven and two, regardless of wins, I think it's really hard to not rank a, a power five, seven and two team. Like you, you gotta be inventing ways to, I would agree with that as bad as the West is. And, and, you know, in fact, Iowa state is probably one of the best games on, uh, Iowa's resume at this point, they keep doing pretty well over there in the Big 12. Um, but the other two games, obviously not anything to be super proud of. Uh, as, as weak as Iowa's schedule is this year, it is still hard. Kevin and I both know it is still extremely hard to wake up, go throughout a week, and then go win a football game, no matter who is across from you. It's a lot harder than it looks on paper. It is so much harder than it looks or seems on paper and to do it seven out of nine times realistically should have been eight. We got absolutely bent. Yeah. I mean, I think if you gave like you, if you gave someone this top 25, like the playoff one, at least maybe not the, yeah. 
yeah. my top 25. But if you gave someone that in July and you said, hey, after week 10, here's all the results, but you don't get any of the scores. You saw a 7-2 and two Iowa team on there. Same you, schedule's the same. You, you, every, everyone's wins and losses are the same. You're like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, they're in there. Uh, hold on, sorry. I, I, I promise I'm trying. You're to good. It, pull it up and we'll, we'll move on. We'll get there eventually. Um, I, yeah. I don't want to let Kevin off the hook here. People are thinking that we let Kevin off the hook. Uh, pull it. Put, pull it away, Grant, for a oh, second. Okay. I want to bring this up to Kev. Kevin, you missed the episode where we uh, where we discussed uh, Brian Brian being fired, but not yeah, totally. Go. But not totally fired yet. Well, uh, we kind of held back and didn't fully discuss because you weren't there, and I I, I knew that we weren't. Although we just tried to three episodes later. A blow by it with you um what were your thoughts what are your thoughts about that um in general and then maybe even more so the timing and um and then i guess we can discuss maybe our thoughts on moving forward from that but what did you think about that word on the street is it wasn't supposed to happen the way it did that's the vibe we'll call it that i'm getting as well um, yeah, so, um, I wasn't a fan of the way it happened at all. Um, can I understand it happening? I mean, sure. Yeah. Let's, um, let, let's, let's talk about this regardless of timing first. Do you agree with parting ways with Brian and move in a different direction? I personally, at this point after, and I know we've beat to death that players matter and an offensive line matters and Cade and our best two tight ends getting hurt and running back injuries earlier in the season, all of that matters. Regardless, we're still seven and two. The offense maybe could have looked better all season. All all things uh, go right there. I am not surprised at all for moving on from Brian. I felt like that's where things were going to go at the end of this season. Uh, if if you had to like make me put a bet on it, and at this point, I, Brian is our guy. People know that every guy in that building that we played under is our guy. They're family. But at this point, for me, it just wasn't working. Like sometimes things don't work, and. It was becoming such a distraction on the outside and in the national headlines and the media, like, and the contract was absolutely just a dumbass BS contract that Barta and them came up with. Like, I think it was probably the right move at this time. Before this season, I was fully on board with, with rolling with Brian, trying to figure things out. But at this point, I'm just like, Let's just move on and like try and get a clean slate here. Those are my thoughts. Absent of timing, what do you think about it? I mean, yeah, the, the track record for the last three years has been poor. Yeah. At best. Um, I think he actually had a pretty solid couple years there, 18, 19, right? Um, yeah. After a couple years as well, but you know, the last three years just kind of fell off a cliff. You know, you can. I don't even consider it 20. I, I literally don't consider 2020. A I don't either. College football. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, but 21, 22, and so far we've seen 23 have just been abysmal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can blame that on execution. You can blame that on lack of talent. Um, but at the end of the day, he's the head of the offense. It's your job to bring in good recruits. Yeah. Develop them and make sure they're executing on Saturdays and we haven't been doing that. So, um, I, you know, is it Brian's fault to what degree is his fault? I don't know. You know it's, I really I'll know. say this. That's a good point. It is less, uh, less Brian's fault. And I'll argue this to the day I die. It's less Brian's fault than 99% of people would make, would make it if they were to like pie chart it out. Like most people would put this, put the offense struggles as like, 100% Brian, 90% Brian. I think you and I would probably put it somewhere closer to like it's 20% Brian and 20% head coach Ference and 30% Brian. 
the 11 guys on the field and 10% this and 10% like it's so much more divvied up than people want to make it. It's just so multifactorial. But like you said, he he is the one, you know, you step into that role and you know. Yeah, I'm sure he's he, like not shying away for it. He's taking out, he's owning up to the fact, maybe not publicly, if not, if privately, but um, I just, I don't, I don't really pay attention to much of the press conference stuff. So maybe he is publicly or not. I don't really fucking know. Um, but I'm, I'm sure he can look in the mirror. It's like, shit, this thing isn't going the right way. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see why it happened from an administrative perspective. I can also see how, you know, Brian just got, got a shitty deal for the last three years. Yep. With, you know, offensive linemen leaving early, retiring recruits to the fact that we have it. Yeah, retiring. Uh, we have an offensive line that you literally can't do anything with. I don't care if you're Sean fucking McVay, can't call an offense with. And then this year, everything was looking good. It's like a older, more developed offensive line, some good skill players, a new quarterback, and then you know, both of our best three players all get hurt. And, it sucks, man. He, uh, but at, at the end of the day, he is the head of the guy. I love the Brian. I love the guy. I love Brian. I think he's there's no better guy. And I think he will find a tremendous amount of success moving forward. Yep. Um, but shit just hasn't worked out for the last three years. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, I told. I understand where you're. You're sitting there trying to come up with the way to to say it. Um, Everything went wrong that could, and there are just part, you know, the him being Coach Ference's son sheds an, un, an unnecessary extra light on the situation. Like all the things, right? There's just so many extra things that went into this that were not his favor. And at some point, it turned into an avalanche that was just never going to turn around. So, um, yeah, and, uh, it's yeah. tough. It's tough, and I and I said this before, for you, Kev, and me, and especially Drake, which the part of the reason that Drake isn't here is because of this whole thing, or most of it, I guess. Um, like that, as a former player, it hurts. Like this, this actually hurts bad to see a guy that you know is just an unbelievable football mind and coach and leader of men. The dude's given so fucking much to the program over maybe more to, than life. anyone. Arguably, yeah. Are arguably him and Lavar, well, I guess and uh Abdul and uh Liddell, like those four hey, guys. Don't leave my man KB out of there. And KB, there's so many goddamn coaches on the staff, it's hard to remember. Uh those five guys, all the guys on staff right now that have also played in the past, those five or six, however many guys there are over there, there's nobody that's given more to the Iowa Hawkeye program. Than those guys, there isn't. Yeah. yeah, and I think uh, you know the way he's been treated by the fan base just abysmal. You know, abysmal. Fire, fire Brian Chance in the middle of the game like that's not doing anybody any fucking good. I think that think that's going to make the players play better. Like more likely make the players going to turn around and punch some student in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I don't think people get that either. I think – I really think that a lot of the fans think like, oh, yeah, let's chant fire Brian. We know the players aren't happy either, and they're just assuming how the players feel. Then you go and you see like uh, this this week an interview uh, from player media availability came out with that uh, Caleb Brown from the Ohio State transfer. They asked him about it, and he's been here for less than a year. And he has one catch, a big one the other day against Northwestern. He has one catch. He's supposed to be this transfer helping out, like, you know, big time talent, Ohio State recruit. And he's known Brian for eight months. And he stands there and he says, like, this is real life. Like, I respect Brian. And I know he's going out there. He's not just winging it. And, like, people just don't understand that. If you're not on the inside, you're just never going to understand, like, you're never going to humanize fully with this. It's always going to be like a, he's just in a position 
that isn't doing well for a team that I cheer for. And I get it. There's no other way for you to feel about it. But a lot of the people's response from that position got personal and like is really fucked up, to be honest. So, yeah. Yeah, personal attacks that just have no place. No place. In, Doesn't even uh, make sense. The commentary. And, you know, the even more fucked up thing is, is like whoever the OC is next year is probably going to walk into a much better situation that Brian has had for the last three years, just yeah. on day one, because again, you're going to have a probably better improved offensive line. We're going to retain pretty much all of our skill players, two tight ends, probably coming back quarterback coming back healthy, you know, it's like, you know, don't do anything and you're going to be better than what we had this year. Right. Um, yeah, shitty situation. Not surprised that it happened. Um, I am surprised the way it did happen. But I, again, I don't believe that was the administration's intent for things that come this way. But who's the rat? Who, who leaked this, Kev? Who, who, who ratted this out? Dude, if, if, I, if there's anything I've learned working in corporate America for the last five years is that if more than five people know a fact, it's going to get out. It's going to get out. There's n- people love to talk way too fucking much. Yeah. And as, as some, especially something as big as this, as soon as more than a handful of people know, it's only a matter of time before everybody knows. It's so easy because the chain of uh, telephone that happens with each uh, successive person that finds out, they have less and less responsibility to keep the secret. And so that's why, yeah, that's why it keeps going. It may have started as a thing where Beth, Brian, and and Kirk were the only uh, three that know. But then one of the secretaries or one of the people in the department also knows. And they happen to just mention something uh, to their wife or to their yes, partner spouse, exactly. at the at the end of the night when they lay down to go to sleep. Guess, and they're like, guess what? That spouse goes to and now work that, that day and at the water cooler, they're just like, boy, do I got something to spread around here. And then it goes so around people, an entire – more, more so than people love to just know information yep. for the fact that they get to gossip about it. It's like, mm-hmm. I know something you don't know. You want to it's, my, it's like one of the things I hate the most. I like, I gossip is like, I, I, I hate gossip. I hate but yeah, I mean, anyone with a brain could have figured that was getting out. Maybe it got out intentionally. Who knows? Um, could have. Yeah. You never know. Uh, thanks for your opinion on that, Kev. Oh, yeah, sure. The Washed Up Walk-Ons Nation appreciates it. We can now finally put that to bed. Grant, can we rip, thanks, that, uh, can we rip that G-Bone Top 25 back up here, please? Oh, sure. The hold. Michigan, the cheaters, still at number one. Yeah, hey, I man. Until uh, allegedly, this. oh, I guess this comes out on Thursday, but allegedly something is going to drop on that. But I made this on Sunday, so. Uh, allegedly, Harbaugh is getting another suspension, right? Allegedly, and allegedly, uh, everyone else is doing the same thing too. I don't know what's happening anymore. I saw that too. But... Like, turns out everybody was also stealing Michigan signals or whatever. I don't and know. Then Connor Stallions has an LLC with Blake Corum, I guess now. I guess yeah, I that was weird. I saw that. Kev, I was trying to think like, is everybody really doing this? We knew everybody on staff, everybody in that video department. I, I. I had a lot of time. If they I, did, never they were doing it. Us. They were doing real secret because I don't know a single person who had extra time on their plate to do any shit like that. But I, I maybe I just think too highly of uh, Coach Ferentz, but I could see him just being like, "What? You guys were all cheating this whole time? Like I thought we were." I well, they, they named the schools <laughs> that were cheating, right? It was Rutgers, Purdue, and Ohio State, right? The other ones that yeah. they are alleging were doing this against them, right? Yeah, I. When something like this happens, it's sort of like steroids in sports or whatever. You're like, oh, everybody is, who, who doesn't know anything thinks everybody's doing it. And um, there's nothing wrong with stealing signs in game, but you can't, sure. you can't be going to uh, well, state it's, games. It's also like, I don't think, uh, is there any evidence of like Purdue coaches on the sidelines of Central Michigan disguised well, as Central Michigan? Well, that's the coach? thing is how far Michigan took this is the problem. Um, Georgia sits at two. 
Washington at three, Ohio State at four, Florida State at five. And then uh, any, any of those five, I think right now you can make an argument for number one. I just want to throw that out there. I think all five of them could win the national championship. I think it's, I think one through eight. I do not think very... Ohio State will win the national championship. I think they are the weakest of, they might even be weaker than Oregon. Really? So you do, so you do not respect the resume. No, the resume is fine. They have good wins on their res. They have pro- arguably some of the best wins on their resume. I'm just going to go by the eye tests. If we're ranking them by the eye test, I would, I would rank them outside the top six. You think they're going to slip up here? I mean, it'll not, be really not until the Michigan game. I was going to say it's going to be really telling <laughs> that last game of the year. The game and uh, where is it this year? At Michigan. At Michigan, and I do, be, I do believe that Michigan is a whole head and shoulders above Ohio State. Yeah, well, which Michigan's only four and a half point favorites this week. But Penn State, they could lose to Penn State. They could absolutely. Penn State's a really good football team. Um, yeah, obviously, I, one through eight, I think all, in my own opinion, have a chance. Uh, Washington and Oregon will likely meet in the Pac. 12 playoff again, right? Or the Pac-12 championship? Yeah. No, and they're it, on the same side of the division. They probably. do divisions over there too. They don't have divisions anymore. The Pac-12. Oh, they got rid of divisions? I thought they did a north and a south. No, it's just best record. Okay, so they will meet. Yeah. So, which, so which could also be like winner gets the Heisman as well. Because depending on how things go. From what I've seen online, a lot of people know that Washington won that game. Or, yeah, Washington won that game, but they feel like Oregon's the better team. Yeah. Which, like, I, I understand that, but I don't think, like, there's people, too, that want Oregon ranked above Washington right now. And it's like, well, like, how are you going to rank a team who that beat, just beat them? And that's the Oregon's only loss. Yeah. Like, how, how are you going to rank Oregon above them right now? Like, it'll solve itself out. Yeah. But, like, to, to get upset about that right now, I don't think. Yeah, that's, that's why resume-based rankings is probably the best uh, way to do it. You have to do it that way. Yeah. Um, Louisville back up into the 11th spot. Oregon State at 12. Missouri. Is a football I, team this year. I, I'm really Staying at 13. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed with Missouri right now. And like, I think I know I they think lost to Georgia, tough. but like, I was honestly pretty. I was still pretty impressed with Missouri. Yeah, they played them real tough. No, yeah. the secondary team of this podcast, and when uh, it falls to the and burns to the ground, when we became we become a Duke's podcast, the JMU Dukes at 15 grand. How do you feel about it? I might put JMU at the top four just to out of spite uh, to the NCAA. I, Such if, they, bullshit. If, they, if they don't respond to this letter that they just sent out, I, I think I might just put them in my top. They petitioned anyway. for bowl eligibility, right? Yeah. They should petition to be in the playoff. I You're mean, right. like they, they are, have been a chainsaw for two years now. A chainsaw. Seriously. Like they've lost one game in two years since as, coming up to FBS. As you would say, Grant, they're cooking like Remy the rat right now. They are cooking. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, no, they're they're playing great ball, and like it's not even like, like if you watch their games, that is a complete very good team. Like, I they, saw that they, they lost one well. of their stud defenders for the season or something. Yeah, which he was leading the league, and I believe uh, like sacks or tackles for losses, and you wouldn't know that because uh, JMU players are also not eligible to be ranked statistically. Wow, that is dog shit. That's a yeah. dumb rule. Um, no, it's it's such a the NCAA is just not doing anyone any favors right now the Tulane green wave at 18 Kansas at 19 Oklahoma has slid a little bit of a fall off from Oklahoma uh, in the past month which is tough LSU at 21 the fighting Irish at 22 Arizona there are some teams in here that are just normally not up there Arizona Arizona is a good team like that is Arizona's on fire the last three weeks playing their asses off yeah Jeff Fish is a great coach and then uh Wazoo beat a good Oregon State team, and then beat UCLA for the last three weeks. So they are- like the, one of their losses is like on the road, Mississippi State, which is the tough, like that's tough. In overtime. Uh, yeah. I mean. Rounding well, it out there, yeah. you got Liberty and the Hawks at 24-25. Yeah. I mean, Liberty, 9-0. and Like you can't fault it. They've smoked everyone they've played so far. Uh, I mean, between like them and Jamie, you're probably the best like – at large, I think Tulane. I just give a little more credit to because their only loss is Ole Miss, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that was their like it was their quarterback's first game. Like I think they made a quick sub. He was the backup uh, before, uh, but Liberty is very very good. Liberty Liberty, uh, yeah. 
And then if I could do a 26, it would be Toledo, who is just – I have them on right now. They are just – Maxion. Maxion, baby. They're taking it to Eastern Michigan right now and probably going to be 9-1. And and if There's a good chance they they're, they get into the poll. So. Um, what do you think the game between Liberty and Iowa would look like? I think it would still be like 15 to 10, like really low scoring. I think okay. Iowa – I think if – like you can run, you can hide. But when you play Iowa, you are going to end up playing an Iowa football game. Yeah, it's just like yeah. I don't. I just don't think you can avoid it. There's, there's, uh, there is. Mm, there might be more than a handful. Fuck, actually, there's probably nine. One through nine on this list because Penn State did it to us uh, yeah. this year specifically. And granted, we're kind of at all time depths here. But if you take your average Iowa team, who has a somewhat slightly below average competent offense, um. There are there there's a handful of teams every year that can actually force Iowa to play up tempo and play from behind with a passing game and and really run away from the Hawks. Um, yeah, I would I would love to see Iowa against so many of the other teams in this top twenty five. It would be so fun. Yeah, no, it would be really interesting. Like it just even to like like Ole Miss and Louisville both have super explosive offenses that feel yeah. like they score it well. Where I don't know, like if they met like Iowa's defense, I'd be curious how how it would it would look then yeah like if, like all of a sudden if you're throwing these passes all over the field and cooper DeShane's back there like they might their buttholes might tighten up a little bit more yeah uh yeah and also i think too just like with like how that would affect um in terms of like uh like if they're scoring a bunch it changes up like how much rest the defense is getting how much sure. their defense is getting uh i think it, it has a lot of different factors yeah i agree um slid the hawks in there at 25 got it like I said, like I think, like I understand the critiques, but like I think if it was just like if the, if you didn't see any scores and it was just like who beat who, and you got a seven and two power five team, I think it's hard not to rank them. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, I'm I'm really intrigued to see how the last three weeks of the regular season plays out, and then championship weekend. It's football's uh, football's fun. Um, fun. shall we uh, shall we get to everybody's favorite? Rutgers. Kevin. I suppose we could also preview Rutgers. I don't have a lot for you, Grant. I know you're the football guy. You're the one who there's there are several people who are like, I, good on Grant for uh, holding you accountable and, and actually trying to preview the Northwestern game, dude. I can't tell you anything about Rutgers. Well, like, are you gonna name this the Rutgers preview? Or are you just gonna call it like I don't know, uh, Kevin's thoughts on BF or? I'm gonna say Kevin quits the podcast. That's what I'm gonna. Kevin also quits. Yeah, L- Kevin quit. Yeah. Uh, I don't, like we don't. I we don't have like I just I like we don't have to talk records at all. I was just. Do you have any thoughts about them, Kevin Grant? Any thoughts on on the Butkers? They are a team that also struggles to throw the ball a little bit. Not as bad as us, but uh, sub fifty percent completion percentage. Um, they want to run the ball. They play good defense, so uh, really it makes sense why the over under is at twenty eight and a half. Um, yeah. This sick. this is going to be like old fashioned slugfest, and when I say old fashioned, I mean like the nineteen thirties old fashioned, <laughs> like, like World you, War Two. Like, there's going to be like an overhead pass with both hands on the football. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like, that would be awesome. Um. I, th- I think I always got the better defense and special teams are just going to give it the edge. I think it, field position is going to be a huge, huge one in this game. Um, so I, th- I think the special teams between uh, Tory Taylor and Drew Stevens making going to be make some long field goals is what's going to give the Hawks the ever, ever so slight edge. It's slight. It is slight. Do you think we see, is there any chance, uh, uh, Kirk and Brian stole the fake QB sneak that Rutgers ran. Hell that was an awesome play. That was a hell of a play. play. The like, tush you, push you is evolving at all. I think it would be a power move. It would be a big dick move. To use use their own move against them. Put Cooper at running back and then that run, might be the, a little obvious. run the fake push <laughs> push. Out there. And then have Cooper, when he hands it back to him, hand to a reversing guy. Total decoy, double decoy. Run down the sideline, touchdown. 
No, I, I am actually surprised, given how bad the our offenses struggle, that we don't try to just pull out all the tricks out of the book. Yeah, we've yeah, wow. I agree. I agree with that. Um, pull cat in like three plays in a row. Absolutely. There's multiple <laughs> options on pull cat. Yo, Madden, run the fake punt on second and five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I saw Kansas ran a, a fun pull cat. I think against Illinois in like week two. I want to say love like it. They, they had a different variation of it. Love when the pole cat gets gets love. Uh, Kev, what do you got for the uh, for the juicy Betfred Iowa sports betting app? What do you got for us tonight? All right. Well, I got the Indiana Hoosiers plus six and a half at Thought Illinois. About it. Um, they are playing their best football of the year despite some injuries. They have actually a good wide receiver as a transfer from Clemson is going to be back in action this week. Mm. Um, and then uh, Illinois quarterback, uh, Luke Altmeyer is questionable this game. Mm. So he got knocked out like the very end of the Minnesota game. They actually won with their backup. Ian. The backup through that touchdown pass? The backup through that touchdown pass. Wow. So he looks like he's pretty solid <laughs> given those three passes that he threw. That's crazy. Um, but I, I will take Indiana plus six and a half. They they seem to be playing solid football after beating Wisconsin and uh, giving Penn State a little uh, little scare. Actually, uh, what else do we got? I've got the under at forty five in the Michigan Penn State game. I think this is going to play a lot like the Penn State Ohio State game. Two really good defenses um, that want to run the ball. Two, uh, so I think that's going to be a low scoring affair. Uh, give me the under on 45, and then the other game of the week, number two versus number 10. I got the under 58 Mississippi at Georgia. Um, 58 a lot of points, and you know, I think you got two good offenses, but I think you actually have a couple defenses that will give the opposing offenses a little trouble, okay. How how often are you cheering on Ole Miss lately? I know there's a, I know I know that uh, fiance Ole Miss fan. Are you are we are we uh are we rocking with Ole Miss frequently or? Oh yeah, no. okay. I cheer for Ole Miss every week. All right, there you go. Like the picks, like the picks. I'm going to the Big Ten for uh, my first pick as well. My first two picks, in fact. Um, as much as I hate to say it, I kind of think Nebraska is okay. We, we know Nebraska is your second favorite team, Kluf. They're not my second favorite team. They're my first favorite team in volleyball. Who's your second favorite? The JMU Dukes, who's my okay. third pick tonight. <laughs> Good answer. Oh, Nebraska's plus two and a half at home. And I'm going with Nebraska, plus two and a half. The big game in the, in the, uh, in the Big Ten this week, Michigan at Penn State. I, I think Michigan, regardless of how good they're cheating or how good they are at getting other people's calls or whatever the fuck they're doing over there, they're really good at football. Um, they're really good I, against the spread, too. Yeah, and while I think that, they, that Penn State absolutely has the talent to come out and you know once or twice out of ten times win this game, I don't think it's going to be the Saturday. I think Michigan's on a absolute terror to try and go win a national championship and i'm going to take michigan minus four and a half at penn state are you concerned at all that harbaugh is the coach now but won't be the coach on saturday i don't think it matters at all the, the head coach of a football program correct <laughs> you can you can make the argument that um in a, in a top 10 game correct the the head coach is least important in fact you don't need any coaches at all you just go Madden. You just yeah. No, you just need Connor Stallions giving you the plays. Is what you need. Um, my final pick, as I said, let's see if I can find it. I think I scrolled past it here. Is the JMU Dukes? Uh, they are playing Connecticut. I think I saw. Yeah, yeah. They're playing UConn. Yeah, UConn is at JMU. Uh, the money line on this is James Madison minus fifty two hundred. Um, I think, I think I might protest a, a minus fifty two hundred pick, but oh uh, no, I'm not taking the money. Oh, okay. Line. Uh, I am taking them minus the 25 points. Give me, okay. give me JMU by like 40 here. You can Do you, you want to, I'll give you minus 40 for three wins. I, I'm not you. taking the alternate okay. line that you <laughs> I, I don't like when you do that. I hate, I hate I, it. I've, that was, it was, we've only, I know. We've only done it once. I know. I think you should have done it. I don't remember what 
Kevin's one was though, but like I think oh, it was like an insane under for the Iowa game. I forget which one. It was the Iowa Minnesota game, and it was like I I said that I think it was gonna go like under twenty five, and it did. It, it did. It did. It did. What it was did. the score? Fourteen ten. It was thirteen ten. Thirteen ten. It was twelve to no. Twelve to ten. Twelve. 12 to 10. Yeah. Yeah. It was under 25, I think. Yeah. They, they just it, should have taken it. Um, so give me JMU minus the 25 points. It's a lot of points. I do I not like big spreads, but I, I, I said this with the JMU podcast. So it is what it is. I love that we're all rallying around JMU. Absolutely. This is great. And it's too, like their whole school is just taking it to just all of, all of the NCAA. I was going right to say now. we're rolling this into basketball season. Yeah, their basketball just took down Michigan State. Soccer just beat the number one team of the country, apparently. Wow. Uh, they're just the whole school. Just they're can't, right, can't do they anything. They're right high right now. Yeah. Um, so it's it's all about the the Dukes right now. I'm sure they have a, like a water polo team who's crushing it as well. If I didn't shout them out, I'm sorry. Yep. Well, and speaking was, of crushing it on the on the on the picks, people want to know who are who are you taking this this weekend, Gary? Well, I have not been crushing it, so I gotta, I gotta get some redemption here. Uh, I do want to give out some bonus picks first because those did well last time. Sure. I also sure. like, uh, uh, as a bonus, I like UCF plus two and a half versus Oklahoma State. I think mm. there's a potential letdown there. Uh, I also think that line's really fishy. Syracuse plus three, Wyoming plus five and a half versus UNLV, and then the always disgusting Cal Golden Bears minus one versus Washington State. But wow. my three actual picks will be the Kansas Jayhawks. Minus three and a half versus Texas Tech. Uh, I think they're just on a roll right now. I love everything about what Kansas is doing. It's a football program lately. Uh, I don't want to jump in front of them. Uh, and also, I don't think Texas Tech is. I, they had a lot of hype preseason, and uh, I, I just don't think it's really working out uh, like they planned. So I'm going to take KU minus three and a half at home. Uh, and then I also i am taking Mizzou. I talked about uh, how I'm high on them. I still think Mizzou is a good program. I'm not, I don't like them as much as that lady who called into the Paul Feinbaum show and said that uh, Eli Drinkwitz is a young Nick Saban right now. I think that that's a little <laughs> much, but uh, okay. Hey, I mean, beating Tennessee in this game would be one step closer, I guess. So she uh, probably just wants to bang him. Eli Drinkwitz. Have you seen Eli Drinkwitz? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he looks like. No, it's I might take that back. Sorry, Eli, but uh, I Tennessee, <laughs> I didn't know we're judging dudes' looks on this podcast now. Sorry, Coach. Uh, Tennessee, though, <laughs> I think uh, I have them ranked a lot lower than other people do. I In the playoff poll, they're 11. Wow. And I have them at 17. Uh, I think they're good, just not great. Like, I think that Florida loss early in the season speaks volume uh, to what their situation is. I like Mizzou at home. I'm going to take them plus one. And then lastly, I also really don't like big spreads. Uh, I agree with you, but LSU minus 13 and a half, I don't think is quite enough. I think Florida is really, really bad. Uh, I don't think Billy Napier is uh, the coach to beat uh, LSU. And he wasn't even the coach to beat Sam Pittman and Arkansas last week, who are much worse. LSU, I think. Is Jaden Daniels playing? Is he not? He got concussed in the Alabama game, didn't let he? Me, let me check on it quick. That might be a big thing. Yeah. Jaden Daniels injury update. Nine hours ago. Cleared to practice Wednesday. So he practiced today. Looks like he's, he's probably, playing. He's, he's probably playing. There. You're good. Okay. Um, yeah, with him playing, I think that's a great bet. Without okay, yeah, him, that's like, a question. Yeah, like I said, I don't think they're very good. Can I do subject to change? Sure. All right, I will swap in Wyoming plus five and a half if he doesn't play. Okay, we like that. That's a nice little contingency there. Okay. Uh, is that allowed? Yeah, Any absolutely. Rules? Okay. Um. But yeah, I like LSU a lot there. At, at three losses too. LSU is a weird team because like people were complaining earlier too. It's like, how did LSU stay in the top five? Where it's like they're okay. Their losses are Ole Miss, top ten team, FSU, top five team, and then uh, Alabama, top ten team. Yeah. So it's like, how much are, you, are we going to penalize them for losing to only really good? Right. Teams? Yeah. Uh, That's where it gets fishy too. It's like, well, what? Do you, yeah. Like it is L, like LSU. If if they were a top ten team, they wouldn't have three losses, right? Sure. It's also like they're not, they're not a bad team because they lost to the three of the best ten teams in the country. Right. Uh, but so I think I'm gonna uh, I like LSU minus thirteen and a half as a summary there. All right, there you go. And also shout out to anyone who bought the Grant shirt. Oh uh, shit! Grant, I'm wearing it right now. On, I got huh? it. Got sent to me today. Uh, appreciate anyone. Uh, if you if you got yours, send a picture of it to me. Uh, Tweet it out. Appreciate all you guys. By the way. The 
there's potential. You'll see it on our socials. If you're subscribed to the Patreon, you'll get the announcement early. There's potential that our Christmas store goes live the morning of the meetup. We might have it going live as soon as Friday. It'll be open for a week and a half, two weeks, and there will be a second G Bone design going. Yeah, up. you you said that in the Discord, by the way, and I was gonna be like, well, this is news to me. Uh, it's, <laughs> was like, it's going in there, baby. I appreciate. It. Yeah. So uh, heads up on the uh, Christmas stuff for uh, for Grant and Kevin. I'm the third host of this podcast. There's only three of us, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.